Welcome, this is the Fieldwork module, Geographical Investigation for SEC 3 Express students. For the elective geography component, we will be looking at weather and climate, geographical investigation. In this particular video, we will be looking at six different weather elements, as well as the appropriate fieldwork equipment that is used to collate data for these six weather elements. The first equipment shown here is the Sixtus thermometer, also known as the maximum and minimum thermometer. This thermometer is able to show you the maximum and minimum recorded temperature over a span of 24 hours. Through the use of alcohol and mercury within the two separate areas of the thermometer, it is able to move the index in different directions and therefore show you the recording of the maximum and minimum thermometer for the day. Important thing to note is when you are presented with a diagram of the maximum and minimum thermometer, the reading that is being taken is at the bottom of the metal indexes for both the maximum and minimum side. The sixth thermometer is placed within a Stevenson screen which is a box that has louvers as elevated about 1.5 meters above the ground to correctly collect ambient temperature readings. The Stevenson screen is normally made of wood, has louvers to allow air circulation so they can accurately collect ambient temperature readings. Ideally, the Stevenson screen should be also placed in a wide open field so that it's not blocked by anything and it's not in, covered in shelter or shade. The second piece of equipment we're going to look at is the sling psychrometer. This is a piece of equipment used to measure relative humidity of the area. For this equipment, you need to wet the wick of the white wet bulb thermometer in water, begin swinging it away from your body uh, continuously for about minute intervals until about 5 minutes. Uh, when you, the consecutive temperatures on the wet bulb is consistent, you stop. Once the reading on the wet bulb is consistent, which, is, which will normally take about 5 to 10 minutes, read and record the temperature on the dry bulb, which also indicates the current air temperature. Calculate the difference between the wet and dry bulb thermometers. This is also known as the wet bulb depression. With the relevant data, you are to refer to the conversion table and match out for the relative humidity at that moment in time. What you see in this slide here is an example of a conversion table. So what you match out is the wet bulb depression versus the actual temperature and you will have the percentage indicated. Thing to note here, in this particular, this particular example, temperature is given in degrees Fahrenheit. So actual room temperature is 60.5 degrees Fahrenheit, depression is 9.5, humidity is 54%. The next piece of equipment that we'll be looking at is the rain gauge. The rain gauge is used to measure precipitation in an area over 24 hours. There's a requirement to empty the rain gauge and record the reading every 24 hours at the same prescribed timing for accuracy. The rain gauge is a very simple device made of a funnel, a jar. Uh, key thing with this is it needs to be positioned in an open area no blockage from buildings or any other infrastructure or even rainfall that is uh, blocked by trees. Another important precaution to be taken is that the rain gauge traditionally is buried into the ground partially so that you, it will not be toppled by wind or accidental uh, human intervention. Having said that, it cannot be totally buried or flush with the ground level because you do not want to suffer uh, intervention from rain splatter onto the ground, being captured accidentally and your data being inaccurate as a result. As mentioned earlier, it is partially sunk into the ground with uh, about 30 centimeters showing above the ground for prevention of rain splash. Final thing to note, you need a measure for rainfall is in millimeters mm. The next device that we'll be looking at is the barometer. The barometer is used to measure air pressure in the area. 
there are two main components to the barometer for indicating air pressure, which is a pair of needles. The measuring hand provides the actual air pressure at this moment in time. The movable pointer needle is used as a reference point, so it is to be adjusted to flush with the measuring hand before you start. This will allow you to see the differences in air pressure as the pressure changes. So point to note, as you move up in elevation, air pressure will fall. As you move down towards sea level, air pressure will rise. The second last equipment that we'll be looking at today is the anemometer. Anemometer here, there are two shown. One is the handheld digital version. The other one is the traditional anemometer. Anemometer refers to the part with the three cups that can spin around as it catches the wind. As the wind is caught by the cups, the three cups start to spin and they will record the speed of the spinning as wind speed. This can come in digital form as well as analog form. As to the common precautions uh, for an anemometer, it needs to be erected normally about 10 meters above the ground in an open area where wind is not blocked. So similar to the other devices that is used to capture weather data, uh, it must be in a location which is free from obstructions. What you see in this slide here is the Buford scale. The Buford scale is a descriptive scale that matches the wind speed with a Buford number as well as a visual impact of what you will see visually at this particular speed. So it runs from Buford number 0 which is calm wind, calm air and it ends at Buford scale number 12 which is hurricane force. And the final measuring device we will cover in this module is the wind vane. The wind vane in this particular picture here refers to both the needle as well as the tail which is the rooster. The wind vane has a very interesting uh, concept here. It uses a large tail to catch the wind and to adjust the angle of the needle so that it points at the wind. The shape of the tail does not matter, however it is always significantly larger than the front of the needle. So this allows it to calibrate towards the wind, the prevailing wind directions until it will point at the direction of the wind. On its own, it doesn't serve a purpose. You need to have the knowledge of the cardinal points and normally it's fastened as an accessory below the wind vane so that you actually know where the wind is coming from. Keynote, it points where the wind is coming from. Now what we see here is the wind rose. The wind rose is a specific diagram used for recording uh, wind frequency over a period of time, mostly a month. Uh, it can take the form of an octagon. It can also be the form of a circle with radiating arms pointing outwards. Uh, each square is used to represent a single day. At times, you will have the dates of the wind coming from this prevailing direction written inside. At times, you will not have the date. So the arm with the most number of dates shows the direction of the prevailing wind for this particular period of time that's recorded. In the middle of the octagon or the circle, there is normally a number. The number indicates the days where there is no wind or days of calmness. And with this, we've finished the six uh, weather element equipment. Please remember that this is a guide. The details and more explanations can be found within your textbook. Gateway 3 of Chapter 3, Geographical Skills and Investigations. So please refer to your textbook for more information.